Pastor Samuel Butler, upbringing. I grew up in a place called St. Petersburg, Florida. My mother and father were both ministers. Uh, my father was Bishop of the Church of the Living God. Um, we grew up in that church. Um, I have nine sisters and brothers. Um, we, we've been in church all of our life, pretty much, until I got uh, to the age of uh, 18. I left home and started uh, performing with uh, other acts, uh, such as uh, Clarence Fountain, Five Blind Boys of Alabama, as well as uh, Shirley Caesar, uh, the Mighty Clouds of Joy, uh, many different groups. That's what I grew up doing. I started singing at four years old. I introduced to people like Sam Cooke, uh, the Pilgrim Travelers, Swanee Quintet, Mavis Staple, the Staples, Staples Singers, um, the Dixie Hummingbirds. My father had us on the road traveling uh, with those uh, particular groups. Uh, at a very young age. So um, I came here uh, working with a show called The Gospel at Colonus, uh, state of Minnesota. We worked at Walker Art to do all the groundwork to frame this show. Uh, it was theater piece. Um, and I worked with people like Morgan Freeman, uh, the Steels, J.D. Steels, Singers, uh, The Soulsters, and The Blind Boys, Carl Lumley, um, Isabel Monk, The Rolling Stones, um, Travel on the Road. So that's, that's basically my musical career got me into doing what I'm doing today. I never thought that I'd be a pastor. I never thought that I would be, um, um, I wanted to sing R&B. Uh, I wanted to be an R&B legend. You know, God had a calling on my life, which uh, led me back. My father always told me, you know, you're gonna come back to God. You, I'm not gonna let you go. I'm, I'm praying that you come back to God. And I was 50, when I came back to God, I say around 50 years old, and that's when I couldn't take any more of what I was doing um, in the R&B and the, the lifestyle. The, even though I was singing gospel at some point uh, with the Blind Boys and many other different, but I wasn't living it like I knew I should have been. Me, conviction set in. And, and it got me real good. It got me real good because God, I felt as though God was talking to me and giving me another chance to be live a peaceful life, live a, a joyous life. And uh, he did. He gave me that chance. And I have uh, a wife with three kids here uh, that um, I'm able to be an example of what, it, what it's like to live for God. So in living for God, it, it took me from that to uh, ministry uh, and helping the homeless, helping people like I was, because I was addicted. I had a, an, addicted, a, 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 an addictive personality. Um, so um, I got out of that and I've been blessed, like I said, to be able to help people that are can't see their way, their way, their way through, um, and it's a it's a great feeling to be able to help somebody eat when you know that they haven't had anything to eat for for days um, because of the substance abuse and and, and 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 losing their minds and losing their families and all of that. So my father started off doing this years ago. He had a, a, a place called Free Will Givers Incorporated. I was, uh, I think I was in fifth, sixth grade, and he always helped people. And he took in um, furniture and helped people that didn't have 
um, stoves, you name it, uh, food, clothing, um, and that's what they did. Uh, and he showed us that by giving back, you could help a lot of people. And there was a lot of good stuff that was being given to Salvation Army, uh, Goodwill and other churches, but the church was the place that was supposed to have been doing this work to put your arms around the people that are less fortunate. And if the church doesn't do it, then, um, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a little harder. It's a little harder because the church can do it for free. The church can give it freely. Freely give, freely receive. One of those type of things. So uh, my dad showed us that. And then when I got here, my pastor, Reverend Carl Darisol, um, which I grew up with, he was, he was a student under my father. Uh, he's only two years older than I. And we went to school together. We, you know, we went to church together. Um, um, we lived in, the, in their home in Vero Beach, Florida, as my father pastored over there um, during a, my upbringing. And so we, we kind of got back together here um, in Minnesota. And he had already started doing the bread ministry. He was, he was already uh, uh, going to get the food from uh, Cubs and um, taking it to homeless people uh, three times a week. So we didn't change anything. Uh, we just dug right in because it, it, it felt like being back at home. Uh, and it works because, again, you never know who needs what. But you do know that there are people out there that need. And what can you do to make it a little easier for them? Um, so, you know, I started helping him. And I enjoyed it because it actually, it helped me because I was kind of a little chubby and I needed to lose some weight. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a good workout, a good workout for me. But, uh, and I, yeah, so I've been, uh, I continued. I just continued uh, to do this. And the more I continue, the more I see more of a need because I, I mean, it's not, it's not fun to see somebody on the corner crying because they, uh, they're uh, stuck in a lifestyle that they can't even support. Drinking, they, 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 they've been drinking all night. Um, the alcohol has got them, they're consumed. And not only that, they're, uh, uh, they're truly addicted. You know what I'm saying to this thing? Uh, cigarette smoking. Um, just different parts of life that takes you down. It doesn't bring you up. So. We can only take about like 20 boxes of food. 20 boxes of food? Yeah, because we can't. Well, Dee is already handled, I think. Okay. Dee, how many boxes did you get give out? Everything? Okay. I don't know what. So I don't know what, what all you got. <laughs> so uh, my, uh, I took my head off to the pastor because he was doing this all by himself. After three years of helping him, he decided to retire and go back to Florida. Uh, and so I, he put it into my hands. And from that time, we've been able to grow from one uh, vehicle of uh, packing up every day, uh, three times a week rather. We have now three vehicles that we go out and uh, fill them up. And we go to the food banks, we go to RS Eden, we go to uh, uh, Grace in the City downtown, we go to Freedom Works. Uh, we go to um, some of your, uh, um, the food shelves, we, we deliver. And we, we give back. Um, Brian Hill, um, Pillsbury. 
Um, there are just so many that we are able to um, to give. There's a couple more that I can't even think of right now, but we're, we're doing quite a bit of work uh, simply because of people like Costco, Hy-Vee, and Cub. Cub gives us a lot of food, and they're giving back to the community. And when the pandemic hit, there was nobody that wanted to go and get these things out of the store. They didn't want to do it because everybody was afraid. But we walkers, I said faith walkers or faith believers, we went and, and, and got some more people. We had volunteers to come and get this food and get it out. And we started from the corners where we see people on the corner begging for food. We'll work for food or we'll, you know, can you help us? So we are homeless and we have no, and then there was a whole bunch of folk in the tents that God had, uh, has allowed us to be able to put this food and it could be used versus being thrown away. Because all this food was going to go in, in the trash into the, to the dumps. So, uh, we, uh, we've been, we've been very fortunate. And it's, it's like I said, it's, it's a job. We don't get paid a, a, a fee, uh, you know, for, for doing this. We do this because of Jesus Christ and because of the love of Jesus. And for what he told us, we are to go and compel men to live and not die. See, if you, if you just really believe in Christ, you can... All these things you can change. So that's what he's done. He's helped us change a lot of people. And a lot of people have gone to treatment. A lot of people are, are no longer out there on the street. The tents, they're not sleeping in the tents anymore. And uh, it, it's not fun sleeping in a tent. And it's minus 15 or minus 5 or whatever it may be. But it's outside. And, and so that gives us the opportunity to do something. And I'm grateful for that. I don't have to sit and talk about it. No, do something about it, you know? That's, that's really important. It's just been a blessing all together, so. It is, it is. It, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world now. Every day. So, again, um, I'm grateful, you know, so I wouldn't change it.